Okay, this is Jim from the Monopoly Project. We're on the, uh, the Monopoly Project motorized uh, motorized floating lounge, and we're still getting the hang of this. Um, it's uh, the Bikini's Girls' Day off on the uh, boat, and they took the boat for a girls' day out, so we're in the lounge here, the battery-powered lounge, and so we're going to do a book review of uh, two books. Uh, the first one is Joe Verity's book on the art and science of staff fighting, fighting with a cane, a cane or a staff. And I got the idea to read this book on Helen's page on Instapundit. They had had a previous review, they had a, a recommendation for another book, not Joe's book. Uh, but I looked at the reviews and there were quite a few negative ones and normally I can shake off a lot of the negative reviews of because people don't understand it or they misinterpreted it. But these I think were valid. So. I didn't buy that book, but in the comments, somebody said, well, this is a really good book on it. And so I got J Joe's book, and I'll, I'll put some uh, uh, photos of it on here. Uh, I obviously can't hold the boat up, the book up. And so um, I do recommend the book. Uh, it, it's really, it's a basic introductory book. It's not the, uh, it's not a complete set. And of course, he has exercises you could do in there um, for different, different techniques. Um, if I was 40 years younger, I might tr try some of them, uh, but it, it is a, a useful introductory book and obviously he has a whole lot more other books on the more advanced and on the other parts of it. So, so I do recommend it. The one thing I, I was um, disappointed in is that the two things that I think the staff fighting would be most useful for would be one is if, if you're on a hike and obviously you you can you typically would have a staff and um, you can see the sun behind me now uh, you would typically have a staff on a hike um, and a defense against animals against four-footed animals um, now obviously a gun would be more useful in, in that in any case if you had one um, so but if you if you have the staff and you're on a hike then that seems to be the it seems to be a, a useful technique to discuss and maybe he discusses that in some of his more advanced books um, and then the other one of course is is against uh, a defense against a knife attack um, obviously you don't want to you don't want to be defending against a knife attack with the staff but on the other hand if it's all you have obviously a gun would be better um, but the staff does have the advantage of you can maintain distance the problem with the staff, of course, with and, and any contact weapon is that you have to be within contact of your adversary, whether it's an animal or a human. And even if you're an expert at it, you're very likely going to get hurt uh, with a knife cut or, you know, with a stick hit or with an animal, you know, bitten or clawed. So you don't really want to be in that situation at all. So it's really a, it's, it's a last ditch or if that's all you have, then that's what it is. So in any case, I do recommend, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I recommend the book. It's interesting. It's, it's a quick read. Uh, there's lots of pictures, a lot of illustrations, which is good. And um, so, so I do recommend it. Um, the other book I was going to review, and I'm not sure if I have time, I'm going to head back, is, uh, is The Tunnel in the Sky by, uh, by Robert Heinlein. Robert Heinlein was a famous science fiction uh, uh, author from the 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s. He wrote a lot of, uh, I don't know if you want to call them serious science fiction books, you know, Stranger in a Strange Land, Time Enough for Love. Uh, Heinlein has a lot of heterodox views, even for this day he would be considered kind of strange in terms of his views on race and sex and um, a number of other topics. Uh, he was a die-hard libertarian um, and so he he has a very, uh, 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 that's a common theme throughout his book, is a distrust of government, you know, and Star Ship Troopers, you know, is another one of his well-known adult ones. But this, this was book, uh, Tunnel in the Sky, was um, explicitly written for, as a juvenile book, that is for young, you know, teenagers. And uh, it shows, um, it, it, it's definitely an interesting book. There's a lot of interesting ideas in it. The, the thesis was uh, uh, based on Lord of the Flies, the book that was written a year or two before him. 
in which a bunch of teenagers are stranded on a desert island and they end up having to establish a uh, society together from nothing. And of course, it turns out real bad with a lot of negative stuff in Golding's book, The Lord of the Flies. In this book, things turn out much better. Um, and, you know, obviously one of the reasons why is that the, the, the students involved, the, the teenagers involved, they range from 16 to early 20s, are explicitly in a school of survival. And this is their final exam where they're being sent into a test situation. Um, and, and, and so what, something malfunctions in the uh, process and instead of being sent to a test situation, they're sent to, an, to a real situation unbeknownst to them. And they never really quite do figure that out. Um, they do figure it out that it was only supposed to last 10 days and nobody shows up in 10 days. And in fact, the, they're there for, as far as I can tell in the timeline, three years. And so, um, so, so it is interesting. It, it, isn't, it isn't as negative as, uh, uh, as Lord of the Flies, because like I said, they've been studying to do this and they know a lot about Robert's rules of order, for example, and you know, esoteric like that. And then of course the other uh, thing with, the, with Einlein's books, not just the juveniles, but the, uh, the adult ones, is everybody talks like a 60-year-old philosopher. And with a lot of uh, irony and uh, you know wit and stuff, so that's probably not going to be true. And it, of course, of course, he has a '50s mentality about sexual roles and this and that. But surprisingly, not a, not about races. Um, the, the protagonist in the uh, Tunnel in the Sky is actually an African American, even though it's not explicitly stated. It's hinted at throughout the book, and in fact, in one of his interviews a, a few years later, he. Heinlein explicitly stated that yes, that's true. Of course, he couldn't he couldn't put that explicitly in the book in 1955 because America was still a de facto and de jure racist society. So it, it would have uh, destroyed his book sales. So he didn't put that in there. But it's pretty obvious, um, and you can see in, from the book review, uh, the books we're reading. I put up, you know, later on that's acknowledged when they have some of the newer versions audio versions and such are uh, are put up or actually have an explicitly african-american lead he's shown that so so it's a good book um i'm gonna probably uh, augment this review with some more comments on the boat as soon as the girls get back uh, because it's hard to uh, drive this motorized lounge at the same time that i'm uh, uh, book reviewing the other thing I think I have a problem with is that the batteries on one side seem to be stronger than the other, so if I push both and go straight, I should go straight, but I'm spinning, so so probably uh, I either need to align these things better, or uh, you can see right here there's a, you know, two of these, one on each side. Um, and so I need to align those better to get back to... Uh, yeah, you can see I'm headed for the house. Let me switch over. And you can see where I'm headed. Or at least I'm trying to get there. And my, uh, obviously my platform's not real stable, so. Okay, so let's, uh, okay, let's see if we can make it home. It, it runs on 6D batteries in each motor so that's quite a bit and uh, you can see I'm headed to there how I'm gonna get off without falling in we'll see um, but you can see we're uh, coming up on here looks like the yachts back but the uh, the girls are gone already so and we'll have to catch them next time I'm gonna try and pull up here to the yacht hand off the camera so I don't drop it in the water and then um, we'll be done.